All right, hey guys, what's going on? Side Home Theater Dude, got a brand new episode for you today. Today's video is actually really cool. I have the Epson 6050 projector, as you guys are well familiar with. And then also there's this brand new laser 4K projector coming out from JVC. I just put out a video about that a couple of days ago. You guys have been asking and asking and asking about uh, you know the different specs, how does it compare to this? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a, a quick comparison between the Epson 6050 and that brand new LXNZ3B from uh, JVC, and I'll do it right after the intro. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about a couple of the parameters in setting up this video. So right now, what we're going to be doing is watching uh, some clips in 1080p and SDR, and then we're going to do 4K HDR streaming, and then we're going to switch over to the Panasonic UB9000, and then we're going to do a 4K UHD disc, and then uh, just a couple of other things to note on this setup. I am using the XMC2 uh, processor. It has two HDMI outs. So with that one, I'm using twin HDMI fiber cords they're exactly the same length exactly the same model exactly the same brand exactly the same everything going into the back of the projectors um the jvc only has one full 18 gigabit hdmi input so i use that one and then the epson obviously has two so i i use that one as well so um, i'm trying to you know minimize the um variables in this comparison and also at the same time i filmed this a couple times already and i was trying to get the video quality just perfect so um the reason why I'm saying that is that you will see probably some lines vertically going across uh, the screen, and that's just artifacts in the camera. I'm recording at uh, 24 frames a second, and obviously you know that the um, the Apple TV content is coming through, and it's w whatever hertz that, that it's picked. So obviously I could have recorded in 30 hertz to help mi minimize that, but it's just artifacts, so don't worry about that actual any of that stuff actually showing up whenever you're watching it, it's imperceptible to the human eye. So the camera is just picking up stuff that you typically wouldn't see. So that's just saying that. A couple things to note real quick before I queue up these clips is that um, pay attention to the pop on Lightning McQueen on his rear spoiler, on his front face, and also Ramon, he's the yellow lowrider. Uh, there is a lot of yellow spectral highlights, especially on that guy. And then pay attention to Doc's um, flashing siren uh, you, uh, that's a, a good representation of special highlights is what I'm talking about. Another thing to pay attention to is motion. Uh, whenever he walks off into the middle of the screen or drives out in the middle of the road, you'll notice that the motion is, is really, really uh, good on, um, on both of those clips. And then pay attention to that butte right here in the background. Those were a couple of things that I was paying attention to. I was paying attention to color, sharpness, and uh, motion. So that's basically how I'm grading this setup. So you guys may have uh, different opinions. It may, you know, not translate at all onto the video. So I'm, I'm just telling you what I did and what I was thinking whenever I made this, this setup. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and play this clip. And then you guys let me know which one you like, one or two. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a real time switch over in between the projectors and see if you guys notice a difference. Again, this is still on the 1080p SDR. So this is switching over to the second projector now. Okay, so now that you've seen that on 1080p SDR, let's go ahead and swap over to full 4K capabilities. Okay, so you can verify right up there, we're at 4K HDR 422 uh, chroma. So that's the max that you can do streaming on this 4K Apple TV.
Okay, so let's make a quick note right here is that uh, the colors overall on this one, they look really, really good, but I think it's, it's really just in the actual, whenever you're looking at a full um, portion itself. So you're looking at the car, the car is very vibrant, it's popping, um, but the overall color scheme, it kind of seems like it's a little more uh, yellow. And overall, it seems like it's less bright at the same time. Um, so if, if you're looking at this and, and you have no idea of, of what time of day it is, it may look like it, kind of like it's sunset because it gives you that kind of like a yellow type of tinge to it. But if you're paying attention to their shadows, you'll see that it's more or less mid-afternoon. Um, so that's just one thing to note um, in, in this actual clip right here. I just noticed that I really like the way the colors pop on the individual parts, like the, the, the car itself, the sky, um, just those big uh, broad strokes on the overall image or, or on the image itself. But overall, you do get that kind of a tinge. So I just wanted to go ahead and note that here. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it's just one thing that I'm seeing in person. So now let's go ahead and do a daytime type of effect. So let's go ahead and turn on the light so you guys can see what it looks like during uh, the daytime so it doesn't get very washed out. And then let's open up the curtains as well. So this is two and this is one. So now that you guys have a good idea of what the colors look like on the um, streaming content, let's go ahead and jump into full on uh, 4K uh, UHD disc and then see if you guys can tell a difference in those as well. I'll keep the same order, you know, I'll do one and two. You guys comment down below which one of you think looks best and then I'll hash out whichever one is which at the end, okay? So overall, quick editorial on this one, just to sum up this uh, series, is that um, I think that the one, number one has a little leg up on sharpness and color vibrancy, but overall, again, it's the same thing that I was talking about before. The overall scene, if you're looking at the entire image, is just darker. So um, it's it's definitely something to note. It's it's completely different for you know having pop on some parts, which I think number two does, and then great spectral highlights but then this one has great colors and great sharpness. And you can definitely appreciate that right there as you're looking at Gomorrah's hair. Um, but overall, the image is more dim. So you will have a little more color vibrancy with this one in general, but you kind of suffer as having an overall dimmer image. So now let's go ahead and uh, torture you guys by uh, playing the darkest scene, one of the darkest scenes possible in this movie. And then we'll go ahead and see if you guys can tell the difference in that one. Okay, so this is gonna be the great reveal. So um, um, maybe you guys have guessed it right. If you guys did guess it right, go ahead and leave a comment down below. So right here, this is number one. You are looking at the JVC LX NZ3B. So that's the uh, new 4K laser projector that just came out from uh, JVC. And that's what you're, that, that is the image that you're looking at just right now. So let's go ahead and see if I can do a real time swap over in between this one and number two. So let's go ahead and play that one.
that wasn't very real time. But here you go, you can see uh, an appreciable difference in between the two pictures. And uh, this one, in number two, is the Epson 6050, also known as the uh, TW9400, I think, in Europe. And uh, very, very similar to the Epson 5050. I think the only real difference is that uh, you get one of the better lenses on the 6050, and that's basically the biggest hardware change in between those. So uh, no, no appreciable difference in other um, spe specifications on there. Slightly, you'll be able to see an increased contrast ratio, but that's dynamic contrast, and those are inflated by pretty much any company that makes <laughs> electronics anyway. So uh, it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek thing that people talk about AVR power, how, you know, my AVR has 110 watts of channel, and it's an 11, it's an 11 channel AVR. You're probably getting somewhere near 70 to 80, to be honest. Um, sometimes even lower in some cases. But those are unspoken things that uh, a lot of people don't tell you in the uh, AV community, the home theater community and different things like that. But I'm here to let you know that, you know, you guys always know that I have your backs and I'll let you know what I know is the most current and most up-to-date information. So again, this is number two. This is the Epson 6050. And let's go ahead and see if we can swap over real time between the JVC. So let's do this. And that wasn't really real time anyways. <laughs> I can't get this thing down very well. So number one, JVC. Number two, Epson. Number two, Epson. Number one, JVC. Can you guys tell the difference? I can tell the difference. So if you can't tell the difference on the camera, this image is a nightmare uh, to watch if you're not in a 100% dark room. And there is a little bit of ambient spill of light in the room uh, coming from my kitchen. But besides that, uh, it's it's pretty much as, as good as possible. I have the blackout curtains on to the right. There are no lights on in the room. And that's basically the image you get. If I had lights on right now, this wouldn't be watchable. This is an, uh, that you, would, you wouldn't be happy with that image. And so that's just one thing to note um, right here on this absolute torture scene in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's one way to test out if you guys have a um, super dark projector or not so super dark projector. So that 3000 lumens that this one claims to fame, I think it really makes the colors pop, but I don't think it, turn, I don't think it shows up in overall brightness of the entire image. Okay, one last thing to note. So with the JVC, it's a native 16 by nine content. And as you guys are watching it right now, this is 16 by nine. So if you're watching a TV, you know, a widescreen TV, you will have this exact movie, black bars at the top and bottom. Um, I don't like that. I like whenever I'm watching movies to fill up the entire screen. And whenever I'm watching TV, I could care less if there's bars or not. So um, there's a couple different considerations in that. One thing I will say is that with the JVC, it only does 16 by nine. You can't do, you know, flip flop formats. But with the, um, the Epson, you can switch formats. So just see if this thing will zoom in on this remote. I just press one button, lens one. And there it goes. It starts going to work and it figures it all out. Uh, it has pre-programmed in positions that you can you know, switch the format in between. So right there, now I fill up the entire screen. This is a 2.35 screen. What I'm saying is, is you have the ability to switch in between formats. So if you have this, you know, if you wanna go with this bigger screen, this 2.35 ratio screen, then the Epson might, might be a, a great choice for you. But if you don't care about that, if you don't care about black bars like I do, um, then, you know, that's something, something to consider. So let's go ahead and talk about the comparison. So now I'm gonna do a full review on the JVC NZ3 very, very shortly, but just uh, in, qu in quick comparison in between the two, the Epson really gave you a nice overall picture and I really like that you're able to expand it. Um, but in, in terms of talking about picture for picture, I haven't you know done any of the editing, so I don't know how it turns out on the cutting room floor, but I just know how it looks whenever I was watching it in person. So now the Epson had its uh, re really great uh, image. It didn't have the same amount of pop on certain scenes that the JVC did. And right now I'm talking about 4K HDR only. So now with the dark, dark scenes, like on, on 4K uh, HDR typically tends to suffer. The JVC just could not keep up on those dark scenes. Like you were watching that one part on the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and it was almost unwatchable on how dark it was. Um, it kind of seems like there are certain spots on the projector that benefits from those uh, extra lumen output. But uh, overall, I don't think that uh, um, the, the brightness was there, especially for those super dark scenes. Epson loved it. So you can, you can actually see the detail in there and uh, there wasn't a problem with that. 
So for 1080p content, it kind of seems like they went hand in hand um, with the performance on both of them. Uh, there was a little more pop, I think, on the JVC. And then again, on the 4K SDR, um, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's kind of like seems like it's a flip of a coin. Some scenes are better on one, some scenes are better on the other. It's really too close to call. But if, if you're going to be using this in a uh, home, home theater, dedicated dark room environment, uh, you might want to go ahead and save your, your cash and go a little higher on the, the, the JVC line. But if you want to have this in your living room, you know, just as a, a if, you, if you have a nice ALR screen, uh, has a little bit of ambient light, you're going to be watching mainly uh, your TV anyway. Uh, if you want that really big TV experience, then this is probably the way to go with the JVC. But at the same time, it's all about compromises. So if you would like to have the your cake and eat it too, if you want that 16 by nine content while you're watching TV, and you also want to expand upon that and go with the uh, Cinescope 2.35 type screen, um, then the Epson is, 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 is definitely the way to go. Sharpness, I think they were both around uh, the same. Um, and then another thing I will talk about is, uh, I'm gonna mention this in my review, but JVC is loud. Um, I don't think it delivers uh, any more heat than the Epson does, but it kind of gives off this high pitched noise. And I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys about that whenever I do actually do the full review. But that's it. I think I'm going to go ahead in this video here. I think it was a uh, short and sweet. <laughs> I have like 40 minutes of footage. And it's not really short and sweet. So let's go ahead in this video here. Big shout out to Dream Media. I actually bought my Epson 6050 from them a couple of months ago. And then they also have the brand new NZ3 available. If you guys want any of those, I'll go ahead and leave their information down in the description. So if you guys want to grab them, just go ahead and give them a call. But I really appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one.